All right, so in this clip, we are going to work out the Jacobian for spherical coordinates, which you knew was coming because what do we ever do with these coordinate systems but set up integrals, right? So buckle your seat belts and strap in tight. It's going to get ugly here, folks. So we're computing the Jacobian of Cartesian with respect to spherical. So let's see here. So, um, and maybe just for reference off on the side here, I'll write down what my uh, x, y, and z are. So we've got rho, sine, phi, cosine, theta, and rho, sine, phi, sine, theta, and rho, cosine, phi. Okay, so starting with x across the top, we have the partial derivatives. Um, sine phi cosine theta and then rho cosine phi cosine theta and then minus rho um, sine phi sine theta when theta gets differentiated. Okay, next row, moving on to y, we have across the second row um, sine phi sine theta and then rho, oops, cosine, uh, what did I just do? Yes, cosine phi sine theta. Sorry, lost track for a second there. And then rho sine phi cosine theta. All right. And then for the last one, we take our z and go across the third row, and we've got cosine of phi and then minus rho sine phi and then zero since there's no theta in this one. Okay, so that's the determinant that we need to compute. And so I'm going to do the usual thing and make a couple of uh, ghost columns over here just to, just to copy. I'll, I'll deprecate them by making them green. No, not that green. This green. Okay. And we'll do the computation by, by working out the bits and pieces. So let's see. So we're going to have this product here, and then this product here, and then this product here. And so that first one has a zero in it, so we get zero. And then the next one, um, we're going to have uh, rho squared, and then let's see. So we've got uh, cosine showing up in the first and the last one. So we've got two cosine phi's. And then we've got a sine phi showing up in the, the second one. And what do we, cosines. And we have cosine squared theta. Woo, all right. Um, that got a little bit out of place. Let me just whoop, slide it back here a little bit so we're lined up for the next round of fun and games. Okay, so for this one, let's see, so we've got two minus rows. So that's going to give us a plus row squared. And then I've got um, sine phi, sine phi, sine phi. So I've got sine cubed phi. And then I've got uh, sine thetas in the first two. So I've got sine squared theta. All right. So now uh, we go doing, so that's zip, zip, zip. Now we go zap, zap, zap. Okay. So from the um, first one coming up right here, uh, I'm just gonna write them down below. So remember, these ones get subtracted, by the way. So we're gonna subtract this product, which has one negative sign. So it's gonna be a negative term. Subtracting a negative term gives us adding. So we're going to add in, and so let's see, we've got uh, two factors of rho and um, two factors of cosine phi and one factor of sine phi and two factors of sine theta. And then we have um, from the next zap term right here, let's see, so we once again we have one negative term and everything else is positive, so the whole product is going to be with a negative sign, but we subtract it, so it cancels to becoming plus rho squared, and then we have sine cubed phi, and this time cosine squared theta. And then on that last one, it includes a zero, so the whole thing dies. Bam. Oh, sorry, that was meant to be 
here. Okay, so there's all of the terms from our determinant, and it looks like a hideous and unyielding nightmare until you notice that this part here is the same in both terms. So when I add these together, I can factor out that leading rho squared cosine squared sine phi, and then I have a term in brackets that looks like cosine squared plus sine squared. So ah, uh, that just becomes one. And I'm just left with this guy. Um, and then similar thing happens right here. These both have a common term of rho squared sine cubed. So I can factor that out and I'm left with sine squared plus cosine squared theta. All right, and now I look at these two and I go, oh, you know what? Look at that sine cubed phi. I can actually write that as sine squared phi sine phi. There's, there's all my three factors of sine phi together. And then this has a common factor of rho squared sine phi. And so I can pull out these guys. Those add together to become one. And the whole thing simplifies to rho squared sine phi. So there is our Jacobian for spherical coordinates. Aren't you glad you never have to go through that computation again? Okay, but you do need to remember whenever you set something up in spherical coordinates, it gets a rho squared sine phi, just like anything in cylindrical coordinates always has an R.